So today we're gonna take a look at the French Winnower. And this has been requested by several people, so I've been wanting to do this for a while. Uh, so I knew I, I knew I was gonna be doing this one. And I really tried to make this, you know, one lecture, just a one hour video, but just couldn't do it. Uh, it's too hard, so we're doing, let's say two parts. That's the goal. You never know, because sometimes it ends up being three, four, five parts. You know, I just, I can't help myself. Uh, I, you know, I try to go in depth and really cover all of the lines really well, so. We will even be skipping several sidelines today, but I do want to try to do this as succinctly as possible. So let's say two lectures on the winnower. And the winnower uh, occurs after the moves e4, e6, French defense, d4, d5. And as Lulu Wojcik has taught us, black strikes at the center like a bolt of lightning. Uh, hopefully you guys have all watched the learning about it with Lulu series because she, she comes up with lots of good metaphors. Uh, and in this position, the most classical response, the you know, most common way to protect the e pawn is knight to c3. And instead of playing a move like knight to f6 or the Rubenstein, uh, bishop to b4, and we have the winnower. And especially when it, it first sort of came into fashion, it was thought to be sort of a, a dubious opening. It is sort of a, an interesting approach to the position, and it normally leads to sort of sharp fighting chess, especially if, if both players are in the mood, white can play uh, some really aggressive stuff and, and get positions that uh, really en encourage a lot of attacking chess and uh, very interesting fighting games. But, you know, you are committing sort of your dark squared bishop, which is an important defender very often in the French. It's a kind of guy that normally you keep him a little bit closer to the king side for defense. So is giving away the dark squares, because at some point, you know, white's going to play here and, and ask you to take the knight. Uh, will that come back to haunt you? Will white get sort of an attack on the dark squares? Or will the fact that you intend to cripple white's pawn structure mean black's going to get a lot of play on the queen side? So already you're going to get sort of an imbalanced game right from the start. And in a minute, we'll go over the, the main line, which is the advanced variation. And we're gonna slowly work our way towards the poison pawn variation, which uh, we'll have to wait a week. So next week, if, if I know some people were specifically requesting the poison pawn variation. So I do wanna get there and that'll, that'll get a full hour of attention. Um, but I do wanna cover a couple of the sidelines. Now, if this were another three, four, five part series, complete winnower, I'd cover all the sidelines and there's so many here. You know, you can go like here and here and here and here. I mean, there's so many moves that that you can play, you can take this. Uh, but okay, just for the sake of time, we're only gonna cover one of these tonight. And there's this very interesting gambit. And this is the most popular sideline in this position. And we'll, we'll come back and we'll play e5 here in, in just a minute. Uh, and it is, it's, a, it's a gambit. So you're offering this pawn, which is the, the critical test. And the point of the move is, now white's next move is a3. And when you take, I can take back with a knight. And I don't have to ruin my pawn structure. So, uh, and you can also argue as black, you don't have to accept. You could just play some developing move. You can even play knight to c6, but knight to f6 is uh, the most common way to decline this gambit. And you can just argue, okay, this guy, not well placed on e2. Uh, and you can just sort of play off of that fact. However, the critical test is what we're gonna look at. We take on e4. And, okay, I guess after a3, you're, you're asked the question, obviously. Uh, you can go back if, if you wish, but then he gets to take on e4. So more critical is taking. And after the recapture, for the moment, black is up a pawn. Uh, so I'd, I guess I'd also like to just get the class involved early. And in this position, I'm just wondering what, uh, what the class is thinking about and what you guys would play in this position, because there's a couple different approaches you could choose. Knight c6, yeah. Uh, so the, yeah, the winnower expert in the back <laughs> knows, knows the main line. Uh, so we'll definitely come back to this. This is the, the main move, uh, just putting pressure on d4. Any, anybody else want to play anything else? F6. Okay, excellent. Uh, so let's take a, a look at those. I guess let's, let's just start here. If knight to f6, okay, protecting your pawn, that seems very logical. 
Uh, White should, you know, try to get at that pawn again by pinning the knight. And now you're threatening to take on e4. And all of the highest rated games in this variation have gone as follows. h6. And after this capture, white gets to take here. And instead of going all the way back to d8, you can go to e7. And you get, you know, a normal French-like position. Seems like something that could have come out of the Rubenstein. Where black can maneuver his knight. Or you can just put the knight on d7 and play c5. You get those sort of ideas. So for people that are a fan of those types of positions, uh, you can play this way. Um, but yeah, interesting is f5, which I don't think is a particularly good move. It, it feels a little bit dubious to give away your dark squared bishop and then put all of your pawns on light squares. So there's you know a lot of, a lot of dark squares in this, this area that could potentially be very weak. Um, and white actually gets plenty of compensation for the pawn in this position after a move f3. So, okay, you take, take, um, and what would you guys like to play here now? We'll see how greedy people are. Uh, so you can grab the pawn, and your computer will tell you for a little while that this is okay. And then eventually it'll tell you it's not okay. <laughs> so uh, here, there's actually a couple things that have been tried. And this position has never really occurred at the high level, so <laughs> there's not a, a large sample size of good players that have tested this position because it's just not very, very good for black. Because uh, after here, black... In this position, it's occurred eight times in my database, and Black's made the same blunder and lost the same way in all the games. So uh, I don't know the you know, queen to g3 is the best move, but it has a 100% success rate, so I recommend it. Because everybody has invariably played the move c6. You attack the c-pawn. I'm all about holding on to my pawns. I protect my pawn. Uh, but this actually is already losing. So it does take Komodo like 10 seconds to find it. So I'll give you guys, you know, 11 seconds. Um, but I think here you guys will be able to find this. There's a little combination the next couple of moves. There's some only moves. But I think it, it will be easy enough that we should be able to solve it in this room. So if you guys were white, what would you guys play here? Bishop f4. With two threats. You're going to take the knight, and you're going to go here, and you're going to take on g7. So, okay, I, yeah, knight d7, okay. I protect my knight, I protected e5. All right, everything's great, I'm up two pawns. But now what does white have? D1. Rook d1. Um, yeah, and the follow-up? Kinda wanna take the knight. <laughs> There's a lot of moves that are good. Uh, yeah, but taking the knight is the most crushing. Uh, the point is, is bishop e5, and you're going to take on g7. All right, I got, I got one more, one more trick here. Okay, you take check. All right, this is my last, my last trick. You can still mess up. The knight blocks. Yeah, which is much better here. Like this pin, you know, can actually be annoying. But when the knight goes back, I mean, you're just, you're losing this. And all right, Black's just down a piece. Um, OK, and then white wins. And this has occurred in like every game that's ever played this position. So <laughs> but to summarize, yeah, you don't, you don't want to take that pawn. Uh, slightly better is just ignoring for the moment. And after some, some normal moves, you get a position like this. And you are up a pawn. But white has a very easy way to develop. I mean, he's just bringing his, his pieces into the game. Black is going to hope to you know, set up his pieces like this to try to neutralize any attack that white might generate. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll look at a game that started from this basic position. This is sort of you know, how, they, how they generally play it. And we'll look at a game uh, between Das and Nikolic from 2015. And we'll notice a 2600 player here with the black pieces actually got into trouble immediately against a player rated 2450. So this is a very dangerous way to play as black. I suspect 
that the higher rated player as black here was thinking, well, I need to play something that's sort of crazy because I need to win the game. You know, he's 150 points lower rated than me. So I'll play this and it'll be crazy. And then maybe I'll, I'll get some chances. But I mean, white just played really well and <laughs> the game wasn't even very long. So after the move A5, white took here, which is okay. You didn't have to do that, certainly. But uh, black already made a mistake. There's a right way and a wrong way to take back the bishop, and he chose the wrong way. So very early on already, there was a, a bit of a mistake here by black. So how would you guys capture the, pawn, uh, the bishop? I've always had trouble protecting my e-pawn, so it's going to be... Okay, you're going to take with the e-pawn because you've always had problems? It's always a problem. Hey, I don't you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this was the right way to take back, uh, as Darian said, yeah, b5, b4, this sort of attacking thing you want to do. And you do want to deny the knight this square. Um, I suppose what he probably was thinking was, well, white has the e-file. I mean, so if, we, if you take this way, white's going to get to double on the e-file, and that's, that's true. And maybe he was thinking, oh, well, if I take this way, which is what he played, perhaps I'll be able to go here. You know, maybe I'll get to use the open file. But it, it's just not true. Uh, after this move, it's just, not it's just not true. You'll never get you know, your rook there, because white immediately just gets to make too many threats. And the immediate threat is to go here, attacking this and this. So something has to be done about that. Uh, so knight h6. Uh, and it's, it's kind of funny what white did, too. It's, it's not good, but his position is so good, he can <laughs> sort of make a little mistake here. He went here, attacks. Tax the rook, gives it a little poke, which is okay. It's an okay move. Uh, and after here, he should just go to e5. <laughs> uh, you know, this is, that's just a great diagonal for the bishop. And as in the game, you can still put your knight here if that's what you, you want to do. But he went all the way back. So, I mean, it's just a waste of time. Uh, it's like, but yeah, his position's so good, he's still better after giving black two more moves for free. I don't know, maybe he was expecting rook f8 and like, aha, you're worse, don't you want to draw with me? But... Uh, Okay, so he goes here, attacks the knight. The knight jumps in, you know, so is the knight gonna end up getting trapped there or is it gonna be a really powerful piece? The b7 pawn is, is attacked, so it's defended. Uh, and yeah, what's to become of that knight? Is, is he a nuisance or is he gonna get trapped in there? Is he eventually gonna be able to go pick him up or, or what? Um, and here already, White can consider playing a move like g4 and just getting an attack. And if black takes on g4, you take back with the queen, and, and you have a, a very promising attack. So it seems kind of strange. Normally, you might want to get your rooks over there first or do something else. He played a little bit slower, but a very good move, h4. Here comes h5, h6. Uh, and black is nowhere near attacking white. <laughs> so, I mean, white's just going to be first here in the, the race to attack each other. OK. All right, so is the knight, knight trapped in there? Nope. So yeah, queen g3, a very nice move, just defending the knight again, so you're not letting him take. h6, which gets him into a little bit of trouble later. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, maybe it's okay. But the big problem is now white just brings his rooks into the attack. Uh, he, he will be able to use the g6 square in the future. He maybe can get a rook there. So he needs to do sort of a, a rook lift. And we're gonna sort of speed through it because it's, uh, I just kind of want to demonstrate how much fun white is having <laughs> in this position. And it's so bad, the computer wants you to play f4 and then it, white doesn't take the rook. He play, like there's some funny move like this and then you take the rook, you know, there's some sort of like funny business. Uh, but that's just how bad it is. <clears throat> Cause here the position is actually already lost. So both strategically and, and just tactically, the computer already announces that it's, it's winning. Um, so we got some threats on g7, and okay, and the pressure just builds and builds, <laughs> uh, and then there's so many sacrifices. And okay, in the game he played queen f4, which is a good move, but he missed like an amazing, brilliant <laughs> tactic here. So you may want to pause your videos at home. This is you know a super tactical challenge. Uh, I don't think this is a very easy move to find. So I think there's a very, but it, it's it's very spectacular. So I do like to. Just pause for a second and give you guys a chance. And I suppose I can give you one hint. What you would really love to do here as white 
is play queen here check because the king would have to drop back and due to the pin you could play here mate yeah knight takes pawn uh knight takes f5 is just a crusher <laughs> and if you take this you got to get the rook out of the way take the bishop and you can't even take the rook back <laughs> Yeah, because if you go here, it's this, this checkmate. You go here, there's a pin, so the game would be over. Uh, okay, in a position this winning, you, you don't have to find the, the knockout blow to win. So instead, queen to f4 was played. Um, and now, yeah, he just brings all of the pieces in. You know, he's getting ready to take on g7 with something. He's going to take with a bishop. Uh, you know, if he takes here, then you're threatening to take here. There's all sorts of threats. Also, you're, you just, you're losing a pawn, but more importantly, in this position after here, uh, your queen can no longer defend <laughs> these squares that it needs to, so black gave it up. And I just wanted to show that as a, a powerful example of how quickly things can go wrong and the type of initiative that white can get when you do play this, this variation. Um, and we'll, so we'll go all the way back and we'll look at the, the main line here in this uh, variation which is knight to c6. So we're attacking the d4 pawn. Uh, so typically, they pin the knight. And it's kind of funny, because that's what we were doing to them. And then they put a knight here so that they could go here. So what do we do? We do the same thing. Uh, and now we're going to play a6. <laughs> and when they take the knight, we're going to take back with a knight and not ruin our pawn structure. And there's actually several moves here. And this has actually been covered on our YouTube channel before. So for the move castling, I recommend the video that Varakobian already did here. This is his game, uh, Mark Ginsburg versus Akobian 2015, US Chess League. So he did a, a video on this, which is, which is excellent. Um, so you may want to check that out. Um, but also, you, you may be surprised to learn that taking is not a very popular move. I suspect that maybe a lot of people just, okay, that's the point, you know, you take back. But black actually gets an okay position here after and what move? I guess I'll, I'll ask the audience here. What's the move that makes most people not want to play this variation? Yeah, queen d5. And I mean, this, this is certainly playable for white, but the point is, uh, okay, double attack. After you protect everything, you're playing the move f5 which you retain a pawn. But, you know, I, I kind of suspect that, again, white has a really good initiative in, in such a position where you've, you've done sort of the same thing with your, your pawns here. And white has the simple plan of, you know, developing and, and castling queenside. So, I mean, I think this is, is a perfectly respectable way to play as, as white. Um, you should understand that this is the position you're going to get. But, okay, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just not very popular because some people don't like to be down upon. Um, even though most people do, when they play this variation, they're very often trying to, to play a gambit. The main move is bishop to g5, which will often transpose. I mean, you also could have played bishop to e3 uh, first, but it'll often transpose. Um, you're just provoking f6 before you go to e3. <clears throat> so in any lines where black plays f5, it'll just be a transposition. So you're just hoping f6 is a little bit loosening in, in certain variations. Um, and we get a position like this, and OK, we, we're up a pawn. Um, and just to take the, the main line here a little bit further, uh, you know, we get, we get to do the same thing to them. And the same way they get counterplay is with a move like f3. So they get the open g file. And after a move like this, the position is, is actually completely equal. The computers will tell you 0.00. .00. Uh, you are up a pawn as black, but white has a lot of good piece play and the potential to use the G file. Your knight can go back or it can go to A5. Um, this is sort of the position that you can expect. So, you know, if you, you like being up a pawn, you know, you want to be black here. If you sort of like the initiative that you might be able to get with the white pieces, then you want to play white here. Um, but it, it should be equal. So that'll do it for our coverage of that variation. Um, so we'll step back to this position, and we'll get serious, e5. And we'll only look at, at one move for black here, which is c5, 
the typical break that you want to play. Uh, you want to attack the center when you're playing the French. The two ways to do it are c5 and f6. Here you want to play c5, and you know, you're just going to continue to put pressure on the center. Um, OK, and the main move is a3. And again, there's several sidelines. We'll look at just one more, because uh, I was playing the winner for a little bit. Um, but I didn't like it, mostly because there's a lot of variations like this. And if you end up playing lower rated players a lot, it is kind of annoying when they play a move like bishop to d2. Not because it's a good move or anything, but it's just because the positions actually are very drawish <laughs> after this continuation. So it's these types of things that made me not actually want to play this as black. But you can have a look for yourself, and we'll see uh, how you guys feel about it. And the main point uh, is not only, well, you're not going to damage my pawn structure, because I'll just take back with the bishop. But white is also thinking about knight to b5. This is sort of the main point, and then, okay, maybe we can jump into these dark squares. Um, you know, if you have to trade the bishop, and then I jump in to d6, okay, I'm feeling, feeling pretty good. So, I mean, yeah, so if you take on d4, then knight to b5, which is an, it's an okay variation. But uh, mostly they develop their pieces so that whenever you put a knight here, I'll be in time to castle. And there's, there's two moves, knight to b5 being the main line. But there's also this move, a3, which leads to some interesting positions. Um, so they take, obviously we're not taking with a pawn, that's why we put our bishop here. And we develop our knight. And if they take here, we can easily push and take the e pawn. So that's not really a threat. So both people get on with developing. And now black takes. And so now white has to make a decision. So both recaptures on d4 are possible and playable. Uh, I wonder what the audience would play here. You're going to lose the pawn. You're going to lose the pawn. <laughs> and what's funny is this is. At least the next couple moves are a little bit more complicated. Because, uh, yeah, it does look like, yeah, you're just losing the pawn, right? But it, it's a lot more complicated than that, you know, because there's a, there's a bishop here. Um, and it, even though this is less popular, this variation, it's like the universal choice of the higher rated players. <laughs> uh, and I think white does just get a, a small advantage, nothing too major, after uh, this move here. Okay, so it's a discovered attack on the knight. So when you take back, we take the knight. And you just get some position like this, where white has the two bishops, black has an isolated d pawn. But again, it should be relatively even. Um, so you can play this way, and I think, I think this is a, a good way for white to play, just if you just want a very small advantage with white. I think, I think this is decent. But it, it isn't anything too special. So it's great for white. <laughs> Let's see, what a, do, you want, do you want to know what Fritz thinks? 0, 0.00. <laughs> yeah, it's Fritz, though. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's nothing too major. I think you know, Black's next move is probably like queen f6, get a little bit of pressure. And, OK, I mean, it's, it's fine. You think white is like a lot better? That's kind of what my initial impression was. But I, I was sort of just playing around with it a little bit. It doesn't. It's easier to play white. It is easier to play white, definitely. Yeah, so that's why I think this is a good practical choice for for people playing white uh, to play this variation. Mm -hmm. uh, but more common is uh, taking with the bishop, which keeps the center intact. Uh, knight f5, c3. And I do want to show a game only because mostly it's uh, the kind of queenside play that black is looking for, not just in the winnower, but in the French in general. So I think it's uh, instructive for, for that reason. This is the game between Jordi Alza Ballester, who's rated 2200, versus Andres Rodriguez Vila, who's 2500. So uh, obviously the 2500 player <laughs> got all the play he wanted on the queen side, and, and Wait never got any real chances here. Um, so in this position, uh, rook c8 is possible, but in the game a5. And we'll see the typical play that black wants to achieve on the queen side. Uh, so after castles, he took. And black's plan is to lock down the queen side. You know, he's thinking about he can bring the queen in to look at some of these light squares. The knight comes in, looking at some of these squares. Maybe we trade the bishops. Let's draw as many arrows as we can. We castle, we bring our rooks here. These are the sorts of things that black is going to do on the queen side, because obviously when they play at a3, 
They have a few weaknesses over there that black's going to go try to exploit immediately. And white should, for his part, you know, get something going over here on the king side. That's where he has more space. His pawns are pointing that way. But it just never happened in this game. Uh, so again, we'll, it's not our featured game, so we'll go relatively quickly through it. Um, OK, this didn't really achieve as much as I'm assuming he had hoped it would. <laughs> uh, and so here we see it. And he's trying to get rid of this bishop. Obviously, in the French, that's your troubled bishop. Uh, if you can trade it, then yeah, you're doing pretty good, especially as this guy is, is usually a pretty good attacker for white. So white prevented that idea with queen to e2. OK, very sensible. Um, and now black just gets this play over here. The knight's going maybe to c4, maybe to b3. OK, he does something over there. He just keeps his bishop nice and safe. And the knight jumps in. OK, and it's very interesting what happened here, too. He just calmly brings all of his pieces over to the queen side. And I like this, this move here, too. He just tucks it away so the bishop is protected, just in case you ever need to you know, move that knight, just in case you ever need the queen to retreat. Um, and white just has nothing. So I think he's hoping that there's you know, some sort of sacrifice, like I'm putting this here, and something is taking. But uh, it just doesn't work. So here, actually, black is just winning. Um, queen f3 is the mistake that lost the game. Uh, and we'll just go quickly through it. You can pause if you want to solve it. Um, I don't know if this was a blitz game, but there was some like very suspicious stuff from both sides here. <laughs> I just wanted to point out the kind of stuff that black should aim for on the queen side with this game. Uh, he took here, which is just winning. And there's no sacrifices. Uh, like if you take here, we can just like take this. If this thing takes, then you take here with check. So there's just no sacrifices that are, are working. Uh, he went here, which is also double question mark. Um, so he took this. And then he went here, also double question mark. But then very strange, like this what I don't know if it was a transmission error or it was a blitz game or whatever. But I mean, black went here instead of you know playing the obvious move. Yeah, so that's why I'm not. That's why we're not focusing on this game. <laughs> uh, you know, and then okay, he took that, and then some stuff happened, and then resigns. Um, so I don't actually know what really happened there. <laughs> I suspect there was something something fishy, but. Uh, but it's just an example of how you should play on the queen side in certain positions, just in the French at large, that I just wanted to, to point out. OK, and we will return to this position with bishop to d2. Um, and we'll look at the main move here, which is knight to b5. If you do nothing, I play knight to d6, and you won't be able to castle. So you take. And you castle. And again, there's two moves that white can play. Um, F4 is the main move. We'll actually see a game in a, in a different line. We'll look at this move in, in just a second, which is also, you know, it's, I've seen a lot of the higher rated players seem to play here. So it's always important when you're looking in a database not just to look for the most common moves, but also what are the highest rated players playing in those positions. But the main move is here. And after a6, you, you know, come on in. And you're hoping to undermine the center and undermine this knight by taking in the center moves like f6. Um, sometimes if this knight's here, you can take here you know, to eliminate the defender of the knight. These sorts of things are all a part of black's plan. Uh, so you take. And very often, they, they just ignore this pawn. They leave it here. <laughs> uh, you can just play around it and f6. So you get a position sort of like this. And what's sort of amazing is the move that I think a lot of people would play here is, is wrong. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll test the class, the class again in this position. Um, who would you guys play here as black? Mm -hmm, that's the question. Yeah, knight takes on e5. Right, because it's the obvious move. <laughs> yeah, so something is wrong with this. <laughs> uh, you know, it looks great. You know, OK, you're going to take back. I'm going to get to grab your knight. How fantastic, you know? Um, but they take and they bring their other rook into the game. This is sort of dangerous. And now there's actually already a winning tactic. It's not super easy to see. Um, 
I, I think maybe some people will be able to find it, but uh, what would you guys play here as white? Bishop times pawn. Bishop times pawn. Okay. Uh, king takes. Rook to. Um, the rook lift does win as well. But even more crushing and, and to the point is queen to g5. And you have this sort of idea. You're going to check. They're going to go back. You're going to check. They're going to go back. You bring the rook in. Um, so for example, just some casual move. Um, check, check. And the rook comes over. And this rook lift will conclude the affair. Uh, there's just nothing that you can do anymore as black. <laughs> so uh, you do have to be careful. There's a lot of these lines um, that you know do deserve some, some accuracy. So the main move here actually is to take the knight. And then after they take back, now you can take on e5. And it's still really, really complicated because <laughs> now they have this move, uh, which you know has a has some some potential for danger. But okay, you take here, uh, and you'll get a position like this. And it should be equal. I don't know who's more scared. <laughs> uh, is white scared? Is black scared? Who knows? It looks kind of dangerous for both sides, so there, there is you know, some, some danger for both players, but uh, objectively this should be equal. So this is one way to play. But I want to come all the way back one more time uh, to this variation and look at the move D takes C5. And now we'll look at a game between much higher rated players than we've seen so far, the game between Lunda and Nidich. So a, a 26... 50 player versus a 2700 player. So, okay, very respectable players. And the game is actually very short. Um, in this position, black attacked both of the pawns. And white played an unusual but not unknown move, knight to f3. Um, queen to c3 protecting both pawns is more common. But now after here, uh, you get to go here and you'll, you'll take one of the pawns. Uh, so this is sort of the the main line, and you know you get counterplay by playing f6 and trying to undermine the knight as per usual. Uh, in this game, however, knight f3 was played, which just allows black to take. Um, he's hoping to make use of the d4 square. So very often in lines in the French where they end up taking here, they're trying to get the d4 square for their knight. Um, so he just plays here, queen to b6. Uh, you know, you always have to be careful. There's definitely no great gifts here with where the, the queen is and, uh, you know, something you want to be on watch for, but there's definitely nothing there. And so after here, he takes the bishop. And I don't know, it feels like black has already emerged with a slightly better position. And here, after this move, if the knight has to retreat, and it, it does, then you're probably doing pretty well as black. Because um, if, if they go here... Well, you can immediately undermine, or you can play queen to g6. So in the game, uh, he just went back, and there's, there's a blunder coming up, <laughs> which is why I kind of wanted to show this game. Uh, OK, we want to infiltrate on the light squares on the queen side, so here comes the rook. And we're, we're, we'll get to the action. That's what, that's what the people want. So after here, black played this move, which very sneakily prevents what white's next <laughs> move was, but white played it anyway. So I guess he already missed the threat. So here, white, it's white to move and blunder. What's, uh, what's the obvious move? Why did you put your knight there? Knight f4? No, no, I mean, white wanted to play there. Yeah, so I assume that's what he was thinking. He's like, OK, you went here just to prevent me from putting my knight there. But it also very sneakily defends against what I assume is just sort of a natural looking move. I mean. All right, that's why I was maneuvering my knight. I mean, I was going to d4. Now I can take where? Take on e5. OK, but this is wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. So this actually doesn't work. Yeah, if you take, you take here. Uh, you're on the queen. No, this didn't happen. Uh, instead, black played better. But let's keep analyzing this for hours and take here and move, move rook d8, take a here. Okay. But uh, so this actually would be a mistake. 
Um, so I assume White had figured that out. He's like, okay, I got a little trick. Um, but the joke's on White, because Black has an even better move. Okay, knight f4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, right. Yeah, so yeah, as, uh, as pointed out, the point is, um, let's, let's, sorry, let's, let's pass. So he takes here. And the point is, yeah, if you, if you take with anything, let's take with this. Um, as pointed out, queen takes is the whole point. Um, but I got a surprise for you. G3. Oh, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> yeah, you want to play rookie four? Okay, I take. Yeah, and that's the important element that perhaps was, was missed here. Yeah, if you take care, you lose your knight, but if you check, you don't. So here the game ended. Uh, you're in check, you move the king, and I take your queen, and, and I'm winning, so... Uh, you know, a display of just completely dismantling a, a very strong player with some, some early tactics. Uh, so, so yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, it's, but there's, there's a couple little tricks there. So a very excellent game. And now we'll get really, really, really serious. We'll go back to this position and we'll play the main move, A3. Uh, and you, you basically have to take, it's not completely obligatory. But he does have a similar idea, White does, if you play this way, in that if we can break the pin, we, you know, we'd have these sorts of ideas. So the major move for White in this position is b4. And you can take either way. Uh, White's idea is the same. So you've temporarily broken the pin, so the knight jumps in, um, and here he goes. And you might be thinking, all right, I just take, check. You know, feeling, feeling pretty good. But this is not a very good version um, because here comes this, this bishop who's gonna be rather annoying. So after you go back, because otherwise I'm playing knight d6, um, I'm taking this and I mean, okay, after, after this, I'm just crushing you. <laughs> um, that's not a move you, you wanna see. I guess you have to play bishop b6, but this is very good for white. So uh, much better in this position is actually to take on d4. And this actually has been played by a couple of super grandmasters. Um, Grizzchuk, uh, I can't think of the other one, but there was somebody else that, that has played this. Um, so I, I mean, it is playable, <laughs> but it's the same reply here for white. I'm going to d6, so you'd better stop me. And now uh, f4, and we're gonna, this knight will be able to go here, or we can decide if we just want to play around the pawn. At some point, we're going to get your, your bishop, which will be a nice success. So play, um, you know, will be sort of in white's favor. I think this is the sort of thing that white players, you know, really prefer to play, but it has been played by good people, so you can, you can play that way. Uh, but I mean, okay, almost anybody, everybody in this position does end up taking the knight. So you have given away your dark squared bishop, which can be kind of scary. If you ever end up castling, you know, sometimes that becomes one of your best defenders. But you do have some, some counterplay on the queen side, so it's a very nice imbalanced game. And I guess uh, we'll just look at the main move here for, for black, which is knight to e7. I can't go to f6, so this is the next most logical square. And next week, we'll look at the, uh, the alternatives here to the main line, which is queen to g4. There's also the moves knight to f3, which just seems like a normal move, even though it's not supposed to be as theoretically challenging. And we'll look at h4, which is not very popular, but it is quite dangerous. So we'll, we'll take a look at those moves. But we got to get serious here tonight. So queen to g4. And our, our main line for uh, next week is going to be the poison pawn variation. So like queen to c7, which is obviously a pawn sacrifice. So this, is, this will be the starting position for next week. So people can start preparing for the first round of the next Monday Night Mayhem. But uh, I do want to point out this other very popular variation, which is just to castle. Okay, that, that's one way to defend your g-pawn. 
And in order to give you the false impression that this is unplayable for black, we'll switch the colors and show you a game that white won. Because uh, that's what's important. You want to think that you can't play this way. And we'll even go back all the way to the start so that we can, we can watch it again from a different perspective. Um, and we'll show a, a game that was just played two months ago here in the, the US Chess Championship. Um, does anybody know what game I'm talking about? Nope. Okay, castles. And there was the, the game between Caruana as white playing Sam Shanklin. Um, and Sam actually just finished up a tournament in uh, Edmonton just now, and I mean, he got eight out of nine points. So he did, uh, he did very well. So Sam, I mean, he's, he's not too shabby. Um, but you know, Caruana is Caruana. So he, he was able to win this game. And uh, it might not look like white has that tremendous of an attack. You know, you got your queen out there, big deal. But you can get some play really quickly with moves like bishop d3. The bishop sometimes can go here. You know, this knight can come in and jump around. White well, actually can get quite a big attack. So playing this way is actually quite dangerous as black. And it, in a way, is playing right into what white wants. White is, is playing for an attack on the king. Meanwhile, you get some sort of play on the queen side. But, uh, you know, I'm just trying to checkmate you. So the main move here is bishop d3. And I do want to point out uh, one positional point in this structure. Uh, you might be thinking, OK, a move like c4 humiliates the bishop, and he's going to retreat. He's going to go somewhere. But if he doesn't have to go anywhere, and he doesn't, um, this is actually a strategical mistake by black to lock down the queen side. You, your advantage, I mean, the advantage for white is I got space in the center and on the king side. And your advantage is you got the queen side. So maintaining the pressure there and just building on it with a move like knight to c6 is advised. Because white always has to worry about you taking on d4, opening the center, getting counterplay. And you know that can end certain attacks if you have to give away the center. Um, so this actually is, is not very strategically desirable. Uh, at such an early stage. It's something you might do later on when you know, you're, you're breaking through on the queen side or something. But here, uh, okay, you don't want to move the bishop back, but you have this move, which, I mean, basically forces you to put a knight here, and now I can take it. But we'll, we'll look at uh, the main line here, so we won't spend any more time on, on the move c4. Instead, this move, and here, um, sorry, after this little threat, um, you have to do something here as black. And you, you really don't want to make any pawn moves. Um, there's a lot of concessions you don't want to make. I mean, weakening your dark squares is disastrous. The, um, in this line, I think the queen actually should go to g4 first. But it's the same sorts of ideas in the future that, that might happen uh, with the knight and the queen coming in. It can be very dangerous. Um, h6 can, I mean, immediately be met with moves like this, which should be winning for white, I think. I mean, I think it just wins. But, uh, I mean, so basically you have to defend with a piece. So knight to g6. And it was this position that's been reached 1,500 times or so. And there's basically only one move, uh, a move that's 40 times more popular than what Karawana played in this position. So, you know, it's, like, it's a position that everybody has, has just always played knight to f3. Like, in the dad, there's like no other moves. Nobody's ever done anything. But now, here comes Caruana, US Championship. And he comes up with this, this move, which is really off the radar. You know, it looks a bit strange. Um, you know, is he, it's a 2800 player just blundering away the center. Uh, you know, what could the point of this be? Well, I suspect, based off this game, that we're going to start seeing this move a lot more in this <laughs> position because, OK, what the top players are doing is, is quite theoretically important. But let's just take a, a quick look at the main line because this is what everybody has just always played. And uh, OK, we go here. We understand that whenever we play this move, we're going to take with our f pawn. So now we can understand kind of why the queen is here. This is the sort of thing that happens. Uh, we back up. Now white is you know, thinking about doing this. So we go somewhere where we're protecting our g-pawn. 
And one defensive resource that black is going to have in these positions uh, is he kind of wants to meet h4 with h6. So we need to make sure that this pawn is actually well protected. And the point is that I want to be able to meet h5 with g5. So, OK, you can attack my queen, but I'll stay where I'm protecting my g-pawn. And then I'll kick you away. And you're going to f4. So I'll go here, just make sure this guy's nice and well supported. And uh, OK, we go back, because now we got to do something else. So like g4 is coming. So this is the main line, um, which is going to be very similar to the game. So we'll just look at that. Because in the game, this move, knight to h3. So uh, I don't know if that was in Sam's prep. I mean, he's a very well-prepared player. He's kind of the battle of like the two most prepared chess players in the world. Um, they're both known for coming in with fantastic preparation. So uh, here he played correctly, queen to c7. And now bishop to e th e3, sorry, um, <clears throat> protecting the center. And now after this, you end up taking the knight. And we know which way Sam's going to take back. And queen to g4. And so he's hoping with this move that it's a slight improvement over the main line, because now we get to do this a little bit faster. Uh, so you have the typical moves. In comes the knight. And the knight goes back. So now that this is protected enough, we can meet h4 with h6. Uh, OK, so a very interesting game. He does end up going back. The point is I want to play g4. And what's really cool about this game is white played really, really slow and patient from here out. So I mean, he just, he just slowly, slowly, slowly improved his position. And black just sat there and did nothing. So you know, it's, it's a relatively longer game. So we're going to go kind of quick through it. But uh, I mean, just what he, the way he played was just fantastic. He just gave black nothing. You know, I'm slightly better in the center. I'm better on the king side. I'm just going to slowly, slowly, slowly improve. And probably because he knows Danny Machuca, he played f3 and king f2, uh, <laughs> you know, Danny Machuca style. Uh, and yeah, he actually, he's just, his idea is just to run the king over to g3. The king can help protect the knight. The pressure on the f file is semi annoying. You know, we got to do something. So, all right, bring the king up to g3. And that's exactly what happened. He just brought the king up to g3. That's step one. And, uh, OK. And, you know, so sometimes we do want to get this bishop on, on this diagonal here. Uh, sometimes we want to get the bishop to this diagonal here. That's the ultimate dream. But, uh, you know, if you're going to go here and take this, and I have to be able to take back with a bishop, uh, I need my queen to be defending the knight. So he goes here. He's going to play queen e3. Just lots of little moves, tidying up the position. And it's kind of funny, too, because black is, is breaking on, on the queen side. But it's actually going to be white that's going to switch all of his pieces. And he's going to switch all of his pieces <laughs> to the queen side. So after this, um, yeah, I mean, I'm winning in the center of the king side. And now I'll just go win on the queen side, and I'll own the whole board. Hey, I hate when I play 2800s, and they just win everywhere. Uh, and here there's no sacrifices. Uh, you might think about here, because it, it looks semi-interesting, but it's actually nothing. The exchange stack is uh, irrelevant. OK, you're attacking the knight now. You can even play a move like this, but it doesn't matter. I'll just go here and, and collect the whole queen side. So while it's interesting, it, it shouldn't actually work, any of this. So he played knight to c6. OK, the queen went to e3. Now the knight is nice and protected, plenty of times. She's also protecting f3, so it's not like this is ever going to be a threat. And uh, he went here. And a very interesting thing happened. So now this diagonal is wide open, which when you play these positions, you need to know this maneuver for white. It happens all the time. Yeah, OK, I'll just bring my bishop into play. Very good. Um, you still don't really want to take. I'll, I'll trade rooks and I'll eventually win your c-pawn. So he connected his rooks. And OK, we, we attack your rook. All right, he, he took. All right, I better go get that c-pawn. You have to move your rook. And I just take here. And very slowly, he's just going to start 
<laughs> Winning on this side of the board, you pin me, no big deal. Uh, and you'll see also black just does nothing, nothing, nothing. He like, he's run out of things to do. And white is gonna keep making very, very slow progress. And it's, it's, it's really great to watch. Okay, you get to trade one of the rooks, but the rest of my pieces, all of them, are gonna go over to the queen side. Uh, okay, and he, he moves back and forth. So in comes the queen. You know, it, black just moves back and forth. All right, in comes the queen. In comes the rook. Uh, yeah, it's just not a lot of fun. Uh, he's got to find a way to get his other pieces over there. Black does nothing. Here, a little a little trick. All right, so he's uh, attacking the knight. The knight went back, and I wonder. Does anybody want to take this pawn? He didn't take it, <clears throat> but what, but should he have? Um, so you actually can take it. He, he was he was just testing, so they repeated. You actually can take this, uh, but you know you are allowing some certain things to happen here. So for example, black can play this move. Looks good. I'm going to take your knight, and then I'm going to take your bishop. So you sort of have to play this move. It's it's forced. But now the black queen will get in, and after you retreat, uh, I thought Julian Proleko, who's back from China, was going to come to this lecture, so I put his favorite symbol on the board, uh, but he's not here to see it. Uh, <laughs> you guys can't see it at home, but you know, I got the two arrows, which is a chess-based symbol for with counterplay. Uh, and I asked everybody at like the front desk, nobody knew what that symbol meant. Like, what does that mean? But uh, it, that was for you, Julian, and you didn't even come to, come to witness the symbol. I gave it for you. Um, so this actually is possible. The computer's like, yeah, the queen comes in here, no big deal, because I'm a computer and I don't let you perpetual me. But uh, there's no reason you can just keep sitting here on this position and it's still good for him all day. Obviously, he's not going to let you have any counterplay at all. So he was joking. You can bring your knight back. That was a joke. Just testing, just seeing. Um, and now he finds something else to do. And it's really funny what he did with this king here. And at the time, like all the commentators, nobody knew like what this was all about. But uh, he, he triangulates for some reason that only a 2800 can understand. <laughs> and all the grandmasters that were here were like, what is he doing? What, what could that possibly mean? And yeah, nobody knows. Um, but okay, you know, you got to triangulate there for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, all right, and he goes back. And the knight is going to begin its, its adventure to way over here. It's, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess it is move. This did get him to move 40, so yeah, it could be time control. But, because I'm trying to remember, because the commentators are like, well, kind of genius, <laughs> the most masterful triangulation. Um, but yeah, perhaps he was just trying to make time control. I don't remember what it was at the time. Um, and he plays here. And he's just going to shut down the entire king side. And you, you pretty much have to play h5, because if you let me take this and you have to go here, you're giving away a square that's very easy for me to get to. Um, so, so this happened. And now the knight goes on a little journey. Here he goes, going on a little journey. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, and then somewhere around here, a mistake was made um, in this position. So this is the only blemish on a otherwise perfect game. Um, Black actually here had a chance to, you know, get one of these symbols. <laughs> uh, he could have, in this position, played the remarkable move, uh, queen to f7, which is very surprising. But if you take here, the computer goes here, and it actually finds a perpetual. So, yeah, this actually doesn't work out. So he would have had to have, in this position, traded queens, which he didn't want to because, you know, your queen is a lot better than the black queen in this position. Um, so if here, he would take, and he's still better here, but, he, you know, now you got to win this position. You saw this game? Mm -hmm, you saw the ending? Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. But he played here, and it's just totally lost. This also was funny, some, a, a, a semi-triangulative move. He went here to a light square, but that was just a joke. I want to be on a dark square, you know, because, yeah, you'll, you'll never check me. 
Uh, but OK, this isn't the, the greatest piece I've ever seen in the world. And black's still doing nothing. And OK, eventually white. <laughs> He's slowly, slowly, slowly coming in. I just wait until everybody is, is all set. And here, black had one last little cheapo. This is your very last chance here. The knight went here, uh, you know, blundering a knight. Well, he didn't take it. Uh, if you go here, this is the easy one to calculate, hopefully. You take the knight. But if here, rook b8, and then, yeah, any queen move, and, and we're taking the knight. Um, so he didn't fall for that. He went here. And I'll take your knight on the next move and win lots of material. So here, Sam gave it up. Uh, but it's just a phenomenal game. And it's the kind of game that you know kind of makes you worried to play this as black. Because it's like they just sit on you the whole game. And I'm winning here. I'm winning there. I'm winning everywhere. And just a very, very slow squeeze. Just complete torture. No fun at all uh, to be black. Uh, you know, most of us aren't playing 2800s in every tournament. But you know, that was just a very excellent example. And the, the new move, knight to h3, I expect just to become a lot more popular because uh, it's on the radar now. People know about it. Uh, so very, very good game. And uh, that'll have to conclude it for this first week here. We will come back with the Poison Pawn next week. So until then, hit like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.